Hello friends. I know that some of you these days are getting out and about, but for us here on Flint Ridge Drive, every day is a groundhog day. I get up at the crack of 8.30 every morning, take my supplements, brush my teeth, eat my steel cut oats, and then I'm doing photography and page layout for the, for the new book pretty much all day. Now this time I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm going in to the computer and using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe InDesign instead of cutting everything out with scissors and pasting it with glue and tape and a sort of a medieval manager. And it's been a pretty steep learning curve, but I am making progress. I've progressed from incompetent to haphazard, and I've got mediocre in mind for a goal, maybe, maybe next month. But somehow I am getting there. But when every day is the same, I notice that I'm looking forward to things that I normally wouldn't pay much attention to. For example, the mail coming in the afternoon. Has the mail come? No, it's not come yet. Uh, has it come now? Yeah, what's it got in it? Well, it's got, oh, look here. Here's some credit card offers. And here it says, free steak dinner. Brief presentation following. And then, of course, as always, there's the bills. Then there are the Amazon deliveries. That's good. But then following them, again, the bills. But a couple of days ago, I got something in the mail that was really interesting to me. It was a magazine called Chips and Chats. I had never heard of it before. But it's a magazine from the National Woodcarvers Association. And here we see on the front a gnome and a cat. And there's all kinds of cool things in here. There's, there's these wonderful containers that somebody has carved. Uh, here's a, a snowman. We'll talk more about a snowman in a few minutes. And then here's a pig. I like pigs. And here's all these Christmas things. Remember, just 300 and some odd days until Christmas. And then we turn the page one more time. And here I see this article about Minnie Adkins. And there is Mommy Goose. I won't say in the flesh, but in the wood and paint. And there's a little kite flying up there with an L on it. One of my favorite shots, there's the cow not jumping over the moon down here in the corner, but uh, standing on the moon. But it says I'll share just one paragraph with you on this. It's hard to know how many scraps have fallen into her lap over the decades or even how many pieces she's carved. Counting at this point doesn't really matter, she said, because she's not slowing down. A small piece can take about 45 minutes, and a larger one can take several hours. She still works six days a week, and she still finds the same joy in carving that she did as a child. And I have to say that I find the same joy in carving that I've had for almost 30 years now in her, in her work. And just to my right over here, uh, uh, some uh, concrete proof of that, 190 figures that she's done for this new book that we're working on. This is the third and last Mommy Goose book. Now, when Mommy Goose comes up, occasionally somebody will ask me, well, why is it Mommy Goose and not Mother Goose? Well, Mother Goose is very different from Mommy Goose. Mother Goose is from England. She's hundreds of years old, and she does all the old familiar rhymes that we've heard, Jack and Jill, Hey Diddle Diddle, The Cat and the Fiddle. But Mommy Goose is an Appalachian bird, more specifically an Eastern Kentucky bird. Why Mommy? When I grew up in Jackson County, there were very few mothers. Almost everybody was a mommy that was a woman who had children. A 65-year-old man would say, well, I better go check out mommy. So mommy goose, she talks about 
Appalachian things, and she has a kind of an Appalachian flavor to her language. And her main topic is words. When she's described in the Rhymes from the Mountain book, the first book, it says, Mommy Goose is an Appalachian bird. Like cows love corn, she loves words. She says, corn can be yellow, blue, or white, and words change colors in different light. To talk like your flock is no disgrace. Just use the right word in the right place. Well, uh, Mommy Goose uh, comes through the books uh, always uh, making comments, encouraging the children and the adults, as many adults read her books as children, with comments usually about words. And she says things like, The words are yours, a gift at birth. Let no one scorn that precious store. Those heard first have special worth. Honor them by adding more. Well, in addition to talking about words, Mommy Goose gets off on a lot of subjects, everything from coal mining to mean roosters to play parties, but she also occasionally talks about the weather. And since we're in January, I thought I'd share one with you by that name, January. And it's followed by two very short rhymes, as you might expect, February and March. Mommy Goose says, January, as thick white falls, snowman smiles beyond the law until a thaw. And then she follows that up with February. Now, the poet T.S. Eliot says that April is the cruelest month, but if I get a vote, I'm going to vote for February. February winter is grind, it grinds on and on and on, and we've had enough, and what happens, it just continues. February. In grown old cold, gray keeps hold. Heads down we trudge, frozen mud. And then March. After 40 days dark, the clouds part. The smiling sun, let it come. Well, it was in March of last year that the World Health Organization declared COVID a worldwide pandemic, March 11th. And let's hope by this March, we see the sun come shining through. In fact, I think it's already started to shine a bit with these vaccinations that folks are getting. And hopefully that'll just get better. But let's come back to Mommy Goose's theme of words and let her conclude. The last rhyme in Rhymes from the Mountains is called A Word from Mommy Goose. And she says, a word can be kind, a word can be mean, a word can turn you red or green. A word makes it deep, a word makes it light, a word can make peace or spark a fight. Anything that strong is good for a friend. A word started this story, and a word is the end. So on behalf of Mommy and myself, let me just say, be safe, keep well, and choose your words wisely. Come on, Mommy, here, help me. Help me say goodbye. In the winter months, Mommy wears a head ring. She says it keeps her ears warmer. So take care and bye-bye.